Welcome to Backyard Plus. In this video, we are going to show you how to retrofit your 99-05 Hotspot and Solana Spa with the Gecko YJ3 control system. Before we get started, let's go over the tools and parts you will need. Tools you will need. Phillips head screwdriver, small flathead screwdriver, drill, scraper, needle nose vice grips, pliers, channel locking pliers, black sharpie, and silicone grease. Parts you will need. Gecko YJ3 control box, Gecko keypad, Gecko heat wave heater, Gecko light harness, Gecko LED light, compression o-rings, and strain and relief bushing. If your top side control panel is the same size as the ones in these photos, approximately 4.5 inches wide, then this retrofit kit will work on your spa. Step 1. Disconnect power from the spa. Step 2. Drain the spa. Step 3. Remove the equipment door and control box lid. Step 4. Disconnect the incoming power, spa light, jet pump, temperature sensor, and the top side control panel from the control box. Loosen the terminal block screws and remove the power cord. Disconnect the spa light. Disconnect the jet pump. Squeeze the strain relief bushing with your vice grips and remove the jet pump cord from the control box. Disconnect the temperature sensor and top side control panel. Step 5. Loosen the heater compression fittings and remove the control box and heater from the spa. Step 6. Remove the top side control panel from the spa by loosening the wing nuts underneath the bar top that hold it in place. Use a putty knife to break the adhesive seal and remove the control panel. Step 7. Remove the light harness and bulb from the housing by turning it counterclockwise. Step 8. Keep the temp sensor in place in the well of the filter compartment. Step 9. Use a scraper to remove the residue from the old top side and install the K200 top side control panel on the bar top. Step 10. Insert the white LED light into the connector. Install it into the housing by turning it clockwise about a quarter of a turn. Step 11. Install the provided mounting bracket on the YJ3 box with the two screws and determine the best location to mount the box with the heater remaining in the upright position. Step 12. Remove the old compression o-rings. Cover the new o-rings with silicone grease and install them. Step 13. Install the new heat wave heater in the upright position.
Step 14. Mark the location for the control box mounting screws with a sharpie. Drill the holes shallow, you don't want to puncture the shell. Insert the mounting screws and mount the control box on the wall. Step 15. Connect pump 2, the one speed pump. Connect a black hot wire to K5P, white neutral wire to P19, and green ground wire to P28. In this video, we don't have a pump 2, so we're going to go ahead and remove the harness. Step 16. Connect pump 1, the two speed pump. Connect a red low speed wire to K6P, black high speed wire to K7P, white neutral to P20, and green ground to P29. Step 17. Connect the ozonator if you have one. Connect the ozone black to P23 or P39, green ground wire to P30, and white neutral to P35. If you don't have an ozonator, go ahead and remove the ozone harness. Step 18. Remove the two screws on the strain relief clamp at the bottom of the control box for the jet pump and heater cord. Connect the heater. Connect the black hot wire to P3, white neutral to P4, and green ground to P5. Step 19. Plug the heater sensor cable into P1. Step 20. Remove the existing light harness and plug the LED spotlight into P33. Step 21. Plug the K200 topside control panel into P22. Route all the cables through the bottom of the control box and reinstall the strain relief clamp. Step 22. Connect the incoming 115 volt power wires. Squeeze the strain relief bushing around the power cord with your needle nose vice grips and install it on the right side of the control box. Connect the white neutral wire to N, black hot wire to L1, and green ground wire to the green arrow on the terminal block. For 230 volt operation, remove the brown jumper wire from L2 and P21 and connect the other hot wire to L2. For 115 volt operation, keep the brown jumper wire connected to L2 and P21. Step 23. Reinstall the control box lid and connect the copper bonding wires from the jet pump and the heater to the bonding terminal on the control box. Step 24. Refill the spa by removing the filter and filter standpipe and inserting the garden hose into the standpipe fitting. Turn the water on full blast and wrap a rag around the hose to force all air out of the lines. 
After two or three minutes, install the pre-filter on the garden hose and finish filling the spot. Step 25, connect power to the spa. The display sequence at every startup will be lamp test, software number, software revision, and low level selected. The display will show three dashes during flow verification. If the flow is sufficient, the temperature of the water is displayed on the keypad screen. Now let's program the breaker settings. Press and hold the light key for about 20 seconds until you reach the breaker settings menu. The filter cycle duration menu will come up first. Keep holding the light key down until you reach the breaker settings menu, which will appear as B.24. The values displayed by the system correspond to 80% of the maximum amperage capacity of the GFCI. Use the up or down keys to choose the desired value. For example, if you are using a 15 amp breaker, select B12. If you are using a 20 amp breaker, select B16. If you are using a 50 amp breaker, select B40. In this case, we are using a 15 amp breaker, which means we will select B.12. Press the light key to set the breaker rating. Step 26. Program the low-level configurations. At startup, the display should read L1 for spas with a single two-speed jet pump. If the display does not read L1, or your spa has more than one jet pump, go into the low-level configurations menu. Press and hold the pump 1 button for 30 seconds. Use the up and down keys to select the new low-level configuration. Select L1 for spas with a single two-speed jet pump. Select L3 or L8 for spas with two jet pumps. Press the light key to confirm the low-level configuration. The pump one indicator light will flash when pump one is on at low speed. Step 27. To set the filter cycle duration and number of cycles in a 24-hour period, Press and hold the light button down for 5 seconds until you see the letter D. Use the up and down keys to select the duration of the filter cycles in hours. Press the light key again to select the number of filter cycles per day. Press the light key again to choose Celsius or Fahrenheit. Press the light key to return to the main menu. Step 28. Test the LED spotlight. The light icon will turn red when you press the light key. If the LED light fails to come on, power off the spa and turn the bulb around in the harness. The LED light will only work in one position. Good job. Thanks for watching. Our goal here at Backyard Plus is to save you money by avoiding costly service calls for repairs that you could easily do by yourself. If you have any questions or need to place an order, feel free to give us a call at 805-541-9000 or visit us online at backyardplus.com.